So then, the Epson ET8550, what are my thoughts? Well, my thoughts are that it prints really, really nicely. It's like I've just done this card here. Um, I don't know if you can see, but Green Army. But yeah, the, the colour quality is fantastic. The printing quality is fantastic. Really, really happy with that side of things. But the one thing I have found so far is that if you need to print card of about 280 GSM and up, it proves to be a little bit tricky. The card will print, but it leaves um, like track marks from the, the roller on the card. So that was a bit of an issue for me. I had to try and find a solution to that because when I'm printing greeting cards, which are new items I've been testing and trialing, which I think I, mean, I am going to be adding on a more regular basis, it's going to be a bit of a flaff. I'd like to do quite as heavy a cardstock as I can do, really, to produce a good quality card. I don't want it to be too flimsy. I'll show you. I'll show you what I have to do in order, in order to print one of these greeting cards of about 280 GSM and up. So we've got the printer and my little note to self that I need to put my paper in upside down when I'm using. In fact, let me just close the out, should put the output tray back in. I do like this nifty do it itself feature. So this is where I put my paper in or my, it's like a card really, it's 260 GSM. This is what I print my art prints with. I can put it in here quite happily. The machine prints it, everything's good. This you can use for your uh, postcards, I suppose, maybe CD templates, etc. I will never use this, I don't think. So I haven't done can't report on it but I'm sure it probably works fine because why wouldn't it I'm sure it's fine this was your plain papers envelope oh that might have been envelopes as well plain papers my print paper of 260 GSM goes in there there is a rear paper feeder here for heavier paper the 260 GSM will go through fine there but anything over that comes out with the tracks now i don't think you're going to be able to see ah can you see the track lines that there now that i had run through this rear paper feeder and obviously the print the printer didn't like it and this is not you know this is not horribly thick card so for me to print this card, I have to now flaff with the printer a bit and I will show you exactly what that flaff involves. I'll just push this back in a minute. So I have to complete, I have to completely turn this printer around like so. Hope, hope it doesn't fall off because it's now too wide for my unit. On the back here, there is a pull down. Oh, no, <laughs> see, I'm still learning. I have to bring this up, which I'll show you. So you open this and then at the back, you have a paper holder. As I lift this up, you see, it reveals these two holes at the back here. Now, I have to squeeze these two holes, which should, if I put this up correctly, and then this comes out, this mechanism. Having taken this out, I now need to take this off, which just pulls, which is horrible to do, so you just think you're gonna snap it. Should just pull off. And this is the problem. I mean, you just, you're worried you're going to just pull that up and snap it. And I don't like the feeling of that. Anyway, so we have this. We now take this back to the printer. And this inserts, and I've got to try and remember how to do it, into 
here. So it just clips in. So then that's clipped in there. So now you have a, a feeder to put your card stock. So we've done that. Now, I have to remember that the tray is going to come out and I don't want it to hit the unit I've got in front. So I need to be aware of that when it comes out automatically. But now to use the printer, we have to go to our settings. So I need to select my card and print using, oh, so I've got to go to the options and I've got to select the rear paper feed slot. So this is the other problem with this because when you now print, it tells you that it's going to leave a 20 millimeter margin at the bottom of the printout, which, you know, is not the best. So we're going to give it a try. So, OK, I mean, fortunately, I have a bit of white, a bit, a, a sort of a white gap at the bottom anyway, but we'll just see what happens. So click OK and then print. So now we have to go to the screen because it should come up. Here we go. Preparing to print from the rear paper feed. Do not load paper. So we now have to literally wait. I can't give you a better angle of this because I've got a sublimation heat press in the way. As you can hear, the printer's doing something. Now I've got to watch this, make sure it doesn't hit the... Yeah, that's good. Right, so it now says, remove the rear cover, install the paper load, the feed unit on the paper feed slot, and then the paper, and then load the paper, blah, blah. Anyway, so we've done all that. So we now load the paper. So we take our paper and we have to load it into here and you can feel when it stops. So that's now loaded. And the printer has taken the card. Brings it back out again. And then starts printing. So it's now printing. So it's now coming out the printer look, but as you can see, this is an absolute flaff for me. My printer no longer fits in the place where it originally fitted perfectly. I'm gonna come out here underneath my heat press. I'm gonna have to turn the thing around to get the card off. I only have one card to print. So I've obviously got to put the machine back together again, which I'll show you in a minute. And that's all just, just to get one card printed. Obviously, if my cards take off and I have to do a huge, but then you're not going to get hundreds of orders in one day. So, so literally every time an order comes in for a card, this is the, the procedure I'm going to have to go to in, or go through in order to print that card. I might be able to get it off of here. I don't know. I doubt it. So now, obviously, we have to put everything back together again. So we've got to put this back in. We've got to take this back off and it should just pop up. But again, it's a bit nerve wracking. You feel like you're going to break it. So we take that off of there and then we've got to attach it back in here and it should click in place. There's a little piece here that goes under there. So you just bear that in mind. And then that should click like that. And then this whole unit has to go back into the back of the printer. So it just sort of slots in there, I believe. Bring that, hold those in, push it in and let go. And then that is in. And then you can release your rear feeder back down like so. And then obviously, we have to turn the printer back around again. And shut the output tray. Mm. 
So yes, that's everything we had to do in order to print this cut piece of card, which is not ideal. Um, the printer does say it prints up to 800 GSM and I saw that and I read that and I thought, oh, ideal. I'm never going to have to print up to 800 GSM, but it will certainly manage all the papers I will be using. And it does. But as I've just demonstrated, for me at the moment, anything over 280 GSM, that is the procedure I have to go through. And I think if I'd known that, I probably would have looked at a different printer because where it sits now like this, just using it every day for all the other things, is absolutely fantastic. Perfect space. I've still got me sublimation heat press here. It doesn't get in the way with that. Everything works well. Pop it down, put my paper in, job's a good one. If I'd realised I'm gonna have to keep turning my print around and go through all that flaff, I would. I think I'd have looked at a different printer. So, um, yeah, that's my thoughts on it. It does a fantastic job with the printing. Can't fault it at all. I'm really happy with it. But that is the one thing that I think I wish I'd been aware of before I'd purchased it. Because, you know, it's not a cheap piece of kit. And my old printer, I, I never had any dramas. I just used the same rear paper feeder for everything. Never had a problem with what thickness the cardstock was. So that has been a bit of a disappointment, to be honest. So, yeah, if you are thinking of buying that printer, it's definitely something worth keeping in mind. Um, it might be that a different brand, I've got a few different brands here, and nothing so far has come through that normal rear paper feeder without the track lines. Whether there's a different company out there I haven't come across yet, which will take the paper easier, I don't know. So I'm not saying it's true of all cardstock from 280 up, but all the ones I have tried, that has been the case. I have to go through the whole procedure. So yeah, I thought I'd share that with you just in case it impacted on your decision or not. Um, so yeah, hopefully that was a bit more helpful news on the printer. I've only had it for, what has it been now, three weeks? So yeah, everything else, absolutely fantastic, can't fault it just that one problem I've come across at the moment. So yeah, okay, I'll leave it there on the printer news.